Hello creatives, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to dive into hexes but relating to color theory because hexes stand for hexadecimal and hexadecimal is considered a web safe color code. So we're going to dive right into that but first go ahead and click subscribe if you haven't already. I know I have a lot of new viewers here. Hi, my name is Angela and I do a lot of videos about Photoshop, Illustrator, anything to do with graphic design, illustration, all of that. And I also provide tutorials on pretty much everything to do with graphic design. So go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you like these types of tutorials, sit down, how-to videos, and let's dive in to hexes. Now, hex is kind of like a colloquial term for the hexadecimal code. Hexadecimal code is basically just a color code that is read by the web. So, for instance, you have apple.com right here and their new iMac showcased here. All the colors right here are literally used with hexadecimal color codes. Hexadecimal color codes, they're really not that complicated. It sounds complicated, but it's not. Hexadecimal color codes or hex codes are just a really simple code language for colors read by screens or monitors or the web. That way you can have the most accurate colors viewed on screen, like what you're viewing right now. Let's go into Photoshop here. Now, in the past, if you're not familiar with hex codes or hex color codes or hexadecimal codes, that's okay. You probably have seen something similar to one of these three color wheels, color shapes. These all showcase hexadecimal colors. The way to uh, incorporate hexadecimal color codes or the way to create a hex color is very, very simple. In Photoshop, they showcase hex color codes quite easily. Now, if you want to change this, there is three dots right here. You can change to RGB, you can change to lab, and then you also have CMYK, which we all know or should know is the print base colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Black is represented by K. That's CMYK color code, and then hexadecimal or hex in Photoshop here on the iPad is signified by RGB. So you can see where hex gets its color numbers from, if that makes sense. Let's dive in further. I have just black. Now in the design world, there is black, there is mid-tone black, there is rich black, and then there are different variations of black that goes into gray. Uh, it's really important if you want to have black on a web screen, for instance, if you're doing web design or an app, you want the rich black. And rich black is signified by the hex color code of six zeros. So when you have six zeros, red, green, and blue, which make up the web base colors, red, green, and blue, which is read by every screen, are all zero. When you have all zeros, the hex color code is black and that is rich black which means when you view a web screen the web screen will show you that the truest color is the richest black possible now i do have other colors here let's go ahead and open these up i have blue and this blue is signified by the hex color code of four zeros and two f's is your monochromatic basic blue, rich blue. You could also call it royal blue as well. And that signifies in RGB 00255, where blue is at its max. So when we're talking with hex versus RGB, hex and RGB go hand in hand because RGB is the colors that are displayed on screen that are readable by the screen. And hex color code is the coding language of the color. When it comes to RGB breakdown, go from zero to 255. So when you have hex colors, especially when you want a primary color like blue, they're always gonna be signified by two zeros first because it starts with red and then it goes to green. So that's the next two zeros. And then the two Fs are full richness of color. So the full hue, if you will, which is then signified by 255, which is 
the most saturated blue that there is. So that's why you have two zeros, two zeros, and then two Fs. And then ironically, or maybe not so ironically, you then have red, which is the opposite. So when we open up the hex color code here, you have the first full rich hue saturation, which is red, because it always starts with red, which is signified by two Fs, and then there's no green and there's no blue, so that is signified by two zeros. For RGB, it's 25500, zero, zero, because again, RGB goes from minimum of zero to maximum of 255. So that is your purest red color when it comes to the web. I have one more example here, which is gray, because you know, if it's not rich black, it is on the scale of gray going to white. And this one is signified by eights and zeros. Because RGB is broken down into 16 integr in, like integrals, so um, denominator of 16, when it comes to 808080 zero, eight, zero, eight, zero for hex color code, you have your RGB of 128, 128, 128. So that is basically the middle, the complete middle of the color spectrum. So the complete middle is gray <laughs> because all the colors that get muddled together turns to gray. So you have like this nice mid-tone gray because it's literally in the middle of the color spectrum. That is web safe colors or hexadecimal color range. Now, why would you ever need to use hexadecimal colors or hex colors? Basically, if you want to have a really nice, clean, beautifully rich web design or website showcased, then you would definitely need to have hexadecimal color codes because it is the most accurate of the color. Instead of having the web page read in RGB, which only has the basis of red, green, blue without any of the other colors being showcased, you do need to have the hexadecimal color code to have the most accurate color reading from the screen displayed on from a web page. Because everyone's screen is different, everyone's colors that they display on the screen is different because every monitor is different. But when you have hexadecimal color codes, the color remains the same no matter what screen you're on because it has the accurate, let's just call it the HTML code. So it has the correct HTML code or the most accurate HTML code for the color. So regardless of how your monitor shows up to you, depending on the color scheme you use and the brightness level, or saturation level that you put on your settings for your monitors, the colors will all read the same on the web page. Does that make sense? There are some really popular color codes like these ones here with all zeros being black. By the way, since blue and red where they have the opposites, where blue is four zeros and an F, and red is two Fs and four zeros, they are reciprocated. Same thing with black and white. Black is all zeros, white is all F. So when you have the black to represented by all zeros, and then let's just take the color of the artboard here, white, pure white is all F because it is the full hue and saturation of all the web colors, broken down from red, green, blue. The full brightness, hue, and saturation of colors ends up being white, so it's represented by F. So that's why you have the two Fs, and the whole entire hexadecimal code is all F. So that gives you an RGB of their max, which is 255 for each individual color, RGB 255 for each. And that gives you a very nice and rich color showcased on any web page. For instance, the Mac website. So you can take your eyedropper tool, since we're in Photoshop, literally choose any color, and it gives you a very distinct hexadecimal color code. And it also gives you the breakdown in RGB, so you can see pretty much what those colors can be, so you can replicate it. We can also do that to the buildings here. This is a nice brown, so it gets broken down more and more and more. There's also this dark maroon red, reddish brown, so you can see that it starts with 80, which is half of the 255, so it's 128, and then you have uh, different variations and percentages of green and blue in there. So that is everything 
hexadecimal and hex color code. You can make your own colors from the color picker like I did here. You have a full range of colors from this color square. Some of them are color wheels, but in Photoshop here it's color square. You can go to any colors and you can see the hexadecimal change by default because it is defaulted very nicely here in Photoshop. And again, anything that starts with 80 is half of the hue saturation or half of the full color range. So that would be 128 for one for any of the RGB sliders. Anything that starts off with zero is going to be uh, pretty much null for red, so no red in it. Anything that ends with zero is gonna pretty much have no blue in it whatsoever, just like so, like orange. So I hope this helps you guys to get more accurate color for whenever you are designing websites, web pages for yourself, for clients, or even for phone applications uh, utilizing UI and UX design. If you guys want more videos like this, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you soon, creatives.